Have you ever dreamed about an Earth where people cooperate with each other? An Earth where people can form groups that inspire and uplift everyone in them without fighting? For thousands of years, human beings have been trying to form long-lasting groups that cooperate for the good of all. But something always seems to get in the way. The history of the human race is all about rise and fall and the breakup of organizations into competing elements. Look at this map of planet Earth. Does anything look unusual? Our planet is artificially divided into nation states. The State Department of the United States officially recognizes 194 countries. The artificial division of our planet into nation states leads to separation and nationalism, or patriotism, and thus competition and conflict. Humanity has been conditioned for millennia to think that this is natural, but is it? The human race is evolving in awareness due to a tremendous population explosion that is creating the potential for a sort of critical mass of consciousness. Critical mass is a term that just means the size or amount of something that is required before an event can take place. The continued increase in population will eventually lead to a quantum leap in awareness on a planetary scale. That is what this movie is about. Here is a graph of the world's population. In 1926, there were 2 billion people. In 2011, there were 7 billion. That's 5 billion new souls in about 80 years. Malcolm Gladwell has described a concept called the tipping point. A tipping point occurs as an idea suddenly takes root in the mass consciousness and results in broad acceptance from everyone in society. This quantum leap in consciousness is much different than group acceptance or excitement about the latest fad, fashion, hit song, or TV program. A tipping point in consciousness results in a higher level of awareness for each individual and will create a renaissance on our planet. But first, it will require the dissolution of the old order, which is happening all over the world. We've all been fooled for way too long. For 5,000 years, human beings have been taught to think in self-limiting ways. We've been taught that we are biological robots and that our awareness of self comes from neurons firing in the brain. But the truth is far more powerful. The human race has not yet established a true civilization. The basic requirements of a civilized society are cooperation, based upon mutual respect and a shared concern for the welfare of all, the species that share our planet, and the planet herself. The governments, religions, and corporations of Earth are controlling and are organized like a pyramid, where a few at the top make decisions for the rest. Our societies and our planet has reached only a fraction of its true potential. The problems we have with our political, banking, and religious organizations can only happen when individuals allow those without awareness of self to rise to positions of authority. Before we begin to blame those at the top for their bad behavior, consider the idea that organizations that act only for a few and ignore the concerns of the many can only exist when individuals in society give up their power. We tell ourselves that we can do nothing because we believe that it isn't possible to change the system for the better. The chain represents our own limiting beliefs which keep us prisoners within a vibrational box of our own making. Every person on earth is a vibrational voter. The powers that be can only act in ways that we have all agreed upon. 
In other words, the actors on the stage can only say the lines and do the things that are acceptable to the audience. When we alter what is acceptable to us through a change in our thought and intent, we also restrict and channel the activities of politicians, bankers, and other so-called authorities. Fortunately, people who understand themselves as spiritual beings will never give up their power. More and more people every day are coming to this understanding, which is why events are changing so rapidly. How is it possible for humanity to reach a higher level of consciousness? Mainly by understanding who we are and refusing any longer to believe a lot of nonsense about what a human being is. A human being is a creative spirit housed temporarily within a human body. Of course, the brain, the nervous system, and other biological processes affect our physical consciousness. But ultimately, our self-awareness is not physically dependent. As quantum physicist Erwin Schrodinger said, when discussing the apparent multiplicity of minds, their multiplicity is only apparent, he said. In truth, there is only one mind. The idea that there is only one mind suggests that despite our differences, everyone in the world has something fundamental in common. The ancient Greeks understood this and coined the word synergos, which means synergy. Synergy means working together. A synergy forms when people with complementary skills cooperate with each other. Here is the concept illustrated graphically. Because every human being is a creative spiritual being, temporarily associated with a physical body, all persons on this planet have an association with what might be called a higher power. When two or more people get together, a third force is also present, the creative energy that surrounds all life and all physical form. This energy is a product of consciousness. Even though almost all of us cannot see it, we can feel it. Professor Harold Saxton Burr of Yale University in the United States, after 40 years of painstaking research, showed that all living organisms do indeed have an energy field, which he called an L field, and which he learned to measure and analyze with a special electronic instrument he built himself. The most revolutionary and transcendental discovery Burr made during his research with L fields was that the field exists by itself before any trace can be seen of the physical formation to which it corresponds. It cannot, therefore, be an emanation from the physical structure. Burr's conclusion was, inevitably, that the L field is the organizing principle behind the physical structure, or the program that organizes the atoms and molecules into cells and organs, and conditions them to certain forms and functions. The American philosopher Arthur Young modeled consciousness on the geometric figure called the torus. Energy flows around and through it, Think of a donut and you have the idea. It's basically a flattened sphere with a tube running through the middle of it. Here is a diagram of a torus. Energy flows into, out of, and around the figure, forming a vortex in the middle and creating a toroidal field of energy. Even so-called inanimate objects have this field of energy. Here's a picture of the Sombrero Galaxy. You can see the toroidal field of force that surrounds it. It looks like a donut-shaped object, 
such as an O-ring. This life force is present in all things. Here is the diagram of the toroidal field around the Earth. This is a picture of the Van Allen radiation belts, a torus of energetic charged particles, plasma, which is held in place by the Earth's magnetic field. Here is an image of the halo, invisible light, surrounding the Milky Way galaxy. Note that there is an inner and an outer halo, and a disk that extends outward from the center. The visible light halo reflects a more esoteric one in subtle energy, and resembles the Merkaba surrounding a human being. Each of us is surrounded by our own living field of subtle energy, which contains all of our thoughts and beliefs about life and about ourselves. This energy also sustains our physical bodies and keeps our cells growing and reproducing. When two or more people meet, their life force is naturally attracted to each other. That is because the basic nature of this subtle energy is benign and attractive. Life force is essentially composed of liquid love, and love inherently is cooperative. As a group of people becomes more harmonious, the life force of all present comes together to form a higher consciousness. This can happen in a group, but it can also happen for the entire human race. No one knows how synergy forms within a group, but if you have ever been in a band or a business team or a relationship that hit it off, you know what we are talking about. You can feel a powerful and inspiring creative force, the higher mind, that uplifts everyone in the group and anyone associated with the group. This creative force comes from the power of consciousness itself. And that consciousness is native to every human being on the planet. Does this sound like a pipe dream? Until very recently, it has been almost impossible, because the potentials were not right. Why do human organizations and groups fail? Napoleon Hill told us over 80 years ago that a group will remain available as long as the friendly and harmonious alliance between the individual minds exists. It will disintegrate and all evidence of its former existence will disappear the moment the friendly alliance is broken. The key words are harmony and alliance. Human groups degenerate into egotistic competition and strife through our belief systems, not human nature or natural law. In the past, we believe that it is human nature to fight amongst ourselves, that struggle is inevitable, and that the universe is cold and uncaring and really doesn't give a damn about us. And so, for the past 5,000 years, the co-creative power of human beings has choreographed our collective reality in precisely this way. The rise and fall of human civilizations and groups is not a natural law, but merely an established vibration that we have all unknowingly resonated to generation after generation for thousands of years. We all know how hard it is to break a bad habit. Well, we have a 5,000 year old habit. But now, with 7 billion of us present on the planet, we have the numbers and the intention to override the old belief systems of fighting, struggle, and war and establish a new one. Beliefs are, essentially, information. They are powerful because, like an instruction in a computer program, they program action. Beliefs are strongly held thoughts that we have consciously decided to place in our personal database. I'm no good with money. 
Relationships are hard for me. There's always one person in a group who will destroy it, etc. But information systems are programmable, just like computers, and can be changed when they are no longer serving us. What a person believes is what they have programmed into their own mind. Many of us have been taught that it is almost impossible to change our own mental programming because it supposedly exists in a part of the mind that is inaccessible to us, the subconscious mind. However, the subconscious mind is itself just a limiting belief. There is truly no subconscious mind or ego or any of the artificial divisions of the psyche that have come to be accepted over the past century. Cognitive scientists have never even agreed on the definition of mind. No one has ever been able to locate the subconscious mind or describe precisely what it is. There is no physical component to the ego, the id, the subconscious, etc. They are merely heuristic, made up terms that aid us in trying to understand human behavior. In reality, however, these terms have combined to form an information system that says, you have no control of what goes on in your own head. Accepting that your subconscious mind can control you makes you like the dog and the invisible fence. You meekly accept that you are a victim of your own mental programming. What would happen if human beings rejected these self-limiting ideas that turn us all into victims and perpetuate the status quo? Up until now, we have allowed our societies to be run by selfish, childish people with no awareness of self. But the co-creative power of seven billion people can literally change the paradigm of allowed action. History teaches us that a true paradigm shift in consciousness cannot come about only through scientific ideas. Copernicus's realization that the Earth revolves about the Sun, Einstein's theory of relativity, and quantum mechanics have revolutionized the way we view the universe. However, these great ideas have not led to spiritual and emotional advancement. We are still exploiting and killing each other in the 21st century, just as we did in 3000 BC. Einstein said, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. For millennia, the tools of change have been fighting, revolution, and war, which has perpetuated a consciousness of dissatisfaction. Despite all of the struggle, the collective level of awareness never changes. The actors on the stage change, but the play is the same. Another way to say this is, history repeats itself. What is needed is a shift of consciousness on a broad scale. A positive shift in consciousness, however, must come from within by recognizing our inherent spiritual nature. It's impossible to educate a person to a higher level of consciousness. If you've ever tried to do so, you know exactly what I mean. But how can a planetary consciousness shift occur when the current media structures are controlled by the old order and many are still stuck in the old ways of thinking and doing? Well, it is happening right now, under our very noses. The astronomical increase in the human population over the past century 
is creating a sort of critical mass of consciousness. There are over 7 billion incarnated spirits now on Earth, far, far more than at any time in human history. Moreover, waves of subtle energy are pouring forth from the center of the galaxy, causing an energetic shift. This is leading to an increase in strength and an acceleration of the field of subtle energy that surrounds our planet. This field of energy is the background vibration that is the backdrop for all human activity. This invisible, subtle energy has been recognized by all cultures throughout history. It has been called prana, chi, ki, thought substance, and the force. However, the subtle energy that surrounds our planet is far more substantive than just a vague, esoteric nothingness. This holographic field of subtle energy contains the Akash. Within it are programmable thought templates, which represent all the beliefs and ideas of the human race. In animals, these templates are called instinct. The psychologist Carl Jung referred to this collection of ideas, which he called archetypes, as the collective unconscious. A thought template isn't hard to understand. It's just like a blueprint for a house. The blueprint tells the builders what materials to buy and how to put them together. The blueprint for a house is just a collection of thoughts in the head of an architect who then puts them on paper. All action, all impulses, come first from thought. Action always follows thought. And beliefs are just thoughts we keep thinking and accept as true. The point is that our beliefs program our actions. As individuals, each one of us contributes our own thought templates to the collection, with every thought we think and every decision we make. In turn, this field of subtle energy influences our own thoughts via the law of attraction. What passes for the subconscious mind is actually a collective consciousness, the sum total of all of our beliefs and choices, and it is changing every day. In other words, individual human beings are, every day, choreographing the stage play called Earth, because the actors on the stage can only operate within the blueprint of possibility that we define. They can only say the lines that we have written. That is why it is pointless to blame politicians, bankers, and other so-called bad guys for our problems. Does it sound fantastic to say that every one of us is in some way responsible for what happens on our planet? Well, look at history. History is a chronicle of what war was fought when. We have tried to change conditions through action only and have neglected the most important factor, thought and belief, which programs action. Many people will object to the statement that there is no subconscious simply because this idea has come to be almost universally accepted. And many will also object to the idea of a collective conscious. If there is no subconscious mind, you might ask, then why do people do irrational things? Why are we subject to unexplained impulses and compulsions? Consider the idea that the Earth's field of subtle energy is a three-dimensional hologram that stores information, and that all of our thoughts and actions are recorded. A spherical hologram with a diameter of 8,000 miles, the Earth's diameter at the poles is 7,899.80 miles, would be able to store a fantastic amount of information. With 7 billion people on planet Earth thinking and emoting hundreds of times every day, there are literally trillions of new thoughts and emotions added to the collection in a single day. Impulses, compulsions, and other irrational and destructive urges come to us via the law of attraction from the collective consciousness as a match to our current mood or attitude. 
over the centuries, a powerful resonance to certain limiting beliefs could have built up. But there's good news. What is happening even as you view this movie is a dynamic change in humanity's blueprint for action. More and more people on Earth are rejecting the old ways of struggle, conflict, and war, and asking for more cooperation and harmony. These powerful decisions are causing our old belief systems, which were put in place in a much more solid and slow-moving era, to implode. We are experiencing rapid change because the collective consciousness is being influenced by more and more births. Just as a pot of water heats up and the molecules of water rapidly accelerate when more heat energy is applied. A higher vibration is more powerful than a lower one. When two waveforms that have different frequencies combine, the two are added together and form a third wave. What happens is that the resultant waveform always has the same frequency as the waveform with the higher frequency. So when more and more people ask for positive change, that higher vibration has greater and greater influence in the world. That is why it is necessary to continuously repeat the ideas of conflict, fighting, domination, greed, jealousy, etc. in TV programs, movies, advertising, and the news. When the population gets large enough, and there are enough people who decide to positively change their belief systems, the old, dense thought forms will dissolve. Even those who are stuck in the old ways of thinking will be carried along to a higher level of consciousness by the process. When this quantum leap in consciousness occurs, it will be felt by every single person on Earth. We will have access to new information, and there will be rapid breakthroughs in energy, in medicine, and a whole new world of physical laws will open up to us. This is not some new age pipe dream, but a reality that we are rapidly accelerating toward. Why has the human race been fighting each other for so long? Humankind's traditional philosophies and religions show the individual human being struggling to reach a state of acceptability, either to a higher power or to authority. We either submit or rebel against God, religion, or authority, which keeps us in subjugation. Dr. Marshall Rosenberg, at the Center for Nonviolent Communication, shows us that there is really no difference between a person who meekly submits to something and the person who fights against something. Both persons are resonating to whatever is not wanted and so the unwanted thing continues. And so we control and submit and rebel, century after century after century. A person who understands themselves as a spiritual being naturally works for positive change, without fighting or resisting that which is unwanted. The big lie on planet Earth is that consciousness is dependent on the physical body. This belief, all by itself, is the source of most of the unrest on our planet. We talked about this in the movie, The Unity of Spirit and Matter. The belief that your self-awareness is extinguished like a candle flame when you die is a complete inversion of the truth. Such a belief creates an inner sense of insecurity and an anxiety that there can never be enough. All of this appears to be natural law, but it is really just the result of limiting beliefs we have accepted as true. Beliefs are just information that we program into ourselves, 
and are the source of our so-called subconscious mind. Our human belief systems have stupidly resonated to ideas like, you only live once, there is only so much to go around, and you have to fight to get what you want, for centuries. And so our reality solidly reflects exactly what we believe to be true. As a species, we have become victims of our own thinking. The thought forms of complaining, criticizing, and fighting combine to form an attitude or a consciousness that leads, over time, to disintegration. These ideas have been responsible for the downfall of every human organization and civilization for the entire recorded history of planet Earth. But that reality is not human nature. It is only a created reality. Once we consciously change our limiting belief systems, our world can experience a renaissance. And it is not hard to change limiting beliefs. All we have to do is decide differently. That is the power of co-creation. Are you tired of the same old crap on planet Earth? Well, the simple but powerful truth is that we are all creating the reality that we experience. When individuals consciously change their beliefs en masse, and it is happening right now, we can reprogram the belief systems of the human race. And when that happens, positive change will rapidly occur. Soon the vibration of the old beliefs will fade away, and the new, creative thoughts will gain dominance. That is how it works in a vibrational universe. We live in a multi-dimensional universe. It is not an exaggeration to say that an awakened humanity can literally propel this planet to a new dimension of existence. If a human being isn't just a physical body, then who are we? The following information comes from teachers I have studied under, books I've read, and my own personal guidance. This is a very crude and primitive artist's rendition of the field of subtle energy that surrounds an individual human being. All things are alive and have a similar field of energy. In a human being, this field extends at least 20 feet out from your body. It is completely invisible to the five human senses. Like the halo of the Milky Way galaxy, there is a second field that goes even further out. The field contains an enormously complex and gorgeous collection of geometric energy patterns, not shown here. Each of these patterns represents a programmable template with a specific function. According to my guidance, these templates are accessible via properly targeted thought impulses. The truth about ourselves is so fantastic it sounds delusional. As Marianne Williamson has said, our light is so powerful that it scares us. The Merkaba is the source of that light. The inner sphere of your energy field contains all the templates for the body's perfect health. Here's the information source of the genetic coding for our physical DNA and for proper cellular growth and organ function. DNA is itself a physical structure and must somehow be programmed. Healing occurs when, accidentally or mindfully, a person taps into one of these templates. Think of these geometric configurations of light literally as magic wands that, when overlaid onto cellular structure, will alter the cells back to a perfect, healthy configuration. This drawing is absurdly primitive and crude, and in no way represents the beauty and power of the real thing. The outer part of the field extends far beyond the inner sphere. It interfaces with the planetary and the universal field, the force, 
which composes everything in the universe. All physical form is an extension of this invisible, universal, subtle field of light. This beautiful field of subtle energy is your own personal light ship. The body is an extension of this beautiful and complex field of energy. From lifetime to lifetime, you incarnate in different environments, bringing your personal light ship with you wherever you go. Every life form has an outer sphere that is connected to the planetary and universal energies. All life is interdimensional. All life is sacred, beautiful, divine, and powerful. All life is an aspect of the One Consciousness. Even in the darkest, most ignorant part of the Dark Ages, this field of energy was understood. Here is an image from Wikimedia Commons of a painting by Fra Angelica, circa 1395 to 1455, showing the ascension of Christ. He is surrounded by some sort of energetic portal or gateway. Here we see the Hindu god Vishnu from a 938 AD sculpture in Nepal. He is surrounded by a portal and has the halo above his head, just as in the previous image of Christ. Similar images can be found in the art of the ancient Egyptians, the Tibetans, and the Hindus. The Merkaba is much more powerful and sophisticated than any technological substitute. A spiritually awakened human being has an activated Merkaba, allowing him or her to shine their light onto the world. You may not be able to see this light with your eyes, but you can feel it. It's made of love. Every human being is walking around, surrounded by one of these gigantic, unbelievable fields of beautiful energy. Our spheres of consciousness are constantly intersecting, especially in cities where human beings are crammed together in their millions. If you have ever fallen in love, you know exactly how we see each other in our native state of consciousness. This is how we should see each other, without the chains of our limiting beliefs. the potentials on Earth have now changed. What was a pipe dream even a century ago is now within reach. An Earth where the entire human race is cooperating instead of fighting. What appears to be a breakdown in society is actually a breakdown of the old order. And the institutions based upon the old ways of thinking and doing. In preparation for a leap forward in awareness. It is time to raise our expectations of what is possible. Humanity is writing the script for our own future. In the past, we have written the script of conflict and contention. We did this because we didn't know any better. But now we do. Right now we are nearing a tipping point in awareness. A window of opportunity has opened to change human consciousness for the next 5,000 years. Humanity is on the cusp of a new understanding of the universe in a much more benign and intelligent way. Breakthroughs in free energy from the vacuum, understanding of physical laws on a higher level, breakthroughs in medicine, all of these are a small subset of what will happen. Let us all carry forward our highest vision for ourselves and for our beautiful planet.
Thank you.